Kobe may be famous for Kobe beef, but they're also famous for a lot of B-grade gourmet dishes. So we're gonna try out as much of them as we can. As I mentioned, Kobe is famous for B-grade gourmet food, which means that you use all the leftovers that people normally wouldn't use otherwise. In the case of Kobe, they use all parts of the beef. So we got a hokkake fuji, which is a mix of beef tendon and konnyaku jelly to give that squishy, squishy, chewy, chewy texture in a moranyaki style. So okonomiyaki with all the fixings. So this restaurant has a specific style of ordering. You get different styles of cooking, such as sobayaki, that's just the noodles. We got moved to the counter, which I think is more fun, isn't it? But it's so big. How are we going to finish this off? I don't think we're going to finish it, to be honest, but we'll do our best. The first one we're eating is Hormon Soba Meshi. Hormon is all the beef in it, and Soba Meshi is a Kobe specialty mixing soba noodles and rice. Cheers! Mmm! Yeah, sauce is extremely different. Mm. It's almost like barbecue sauce. Or konamiyaki sauce. But mixed with something sweeter. But it's a little sweet, a little sour. Very fruity. Mm. Not as vinegary. It goes so well with the horomon. Which is so chewy and fatty. Serving it on the hot plate keeps it really warm. The texture of noodles and rice, because the noodles are so broken up after they keep mixing it, almost to the point where I'm kind of feeling I'm eating really long salt rice. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Oh, we're trying it with the shop's original sauces. She's got the sweet, I've got the mild spicy. Okay, so it tastes like they use the sauce to make the noodles. To season the noodles. This is just if you want the flavor to be stronger. To me, it's already well seasoned, so I don't need it. I agree. Mine is the spicy one. It's not spicy. It's just mild, though. It is mild. For people who really can't take spicy, it might be a little spicy. Or for children, it might be appropriate because it's just barely there. It's good, though. This is the monanyaki with hokkake sushi. That's the okonomiyaki style with noodles, a fried egg is on top, with beef tendon and konyaku. Let's try it. It's milder in flavor than the soba meshi, which is what I'm more surprised about. I think they don't season it too much in the middle. They only pour some of the salt on top. In terms of beef tendon, maybe they cut it small. Um, I'm not really getting anything at the moment. I think they're really small pockets of like collagenous collagenous textures which almost melts at the first in the mouth. So if you're not paying attention, you'll miss it. It's not as chewy as I expected. In fact, it's almost tender. Mm. I really like that more than I expected. Anyway, anyway, let's try it with the salt. Let's try the spicy dora salt. seems to be the shop specialty. Mm. It's fruitier. It's not spicy though. It's a bit bitter to me. I'm not that fond of it. It's got quite a bitter th aftertaste on the back of my throat. That's just her. They do know that a lot of Japanese food actually came out after the war. So that's why it's so sort of influenced by Korean and Western food styles as well. In this case, the horumon and the leftover beef parts are not normally commonly used in traditional, traditional Japanese cooking. And it's more of the Korean influence when they started to demonstrate that you could eat these parts of the meat which normally the Japanese did it. Also in the case of soba meshi, this was invented in Kobe when a businessman came over to a yakisoba shop in Kobe area and he asked them to stir fry the leftover rice from his lunch into his yakisoba order. So that's how you get soba meshi. I don't know, it's very, it's very comforting, filling, cheap fast food and carbs. The lemon sauce is really nice because it cuts the sweetness of the sauce 
that they use to stir fry it in, and it also cuts through the richness of the horumon as well. Highly recommend. You do have to put on quite a bit though, because otherwise it's not that strong. What did you think? I thought it was tasty. It was tasty, but it was a cheap flavor. So I wouldn't expect too much in terms of, oh, gourmet or, oh, specialty. As mentioned, this is B-grade gourmet food. So, it is supposed to be fast-paced, delicious because it is filling, hearty, and cheap. Not because it's Kobe beef to the, to the quality of Kobe beef. Personally, I prefer the monanyaki because I like the pancake strip at the top and the bottom, which really? made it crispy. I think I like the hormone, the soba meshi. The soba meshi. Mm. That one is a little bit stronger in flavor, so if you really want something hearty and flavorful, that's definitely one to go with. Otherwise, we would both definitely recommend this place and try these dishes if you can come across. For the next specialty, we went to this one restaurant called Tachibana. We weren't allowed to take photos of the stuff, only the food, so we thought we shouldn't really take photos or film in general until we're out. This restaurant serves arashiyaki, which is similar to a takoyaki, those round octopus fritters that are grilled on a hot plate, only it has a lot less flour, so the consistency is a lot like a steamed egg pudding. From what it looks like personally, it looks entirely like beaten egg. It's soft and fluffy, and it's almost like a pudding. pudding. It's yeah. Honestly, a lot better than I expected. You eat it by taking the arashiyaki and dipping it in the broth, which is piping hot, so be careful. And then, if you'd like, you can put some sauce on it. The sweet one is sweet, and the spicy one is not too spicy, just a little. We had to order one thing each, so instead of getting two portions of that, we had one portion of something. We didn't actually take note because it just happened so quickly. Uh, so we just made a spot decision and got the savory version which comes with mustard and soy sauce and a bit of vinegar. It was surprising as well. I really liked it. It was cold and it was like noodles of jelly. It's not chewy, it's not hard, it's very soft and slurpy. Mm. It was a little bit sour from the vinegar and a little bit salty from the soy sauce but overall a very interesting experience which I really enjoyed. Be careful with the mustard, it is quite spicy. It's not spicy more than horseradish like wasabi. Mm. They provided us with an English menu as soon as we walked in, so we obviously look like tourists. Mm. It says very clearly that you have to order at least one item per person, and even though one of the items can be a drink such as beer or soda. I think we'll find out the next one coming up. So, on to our next one! Kobe has one of the largest Chinatowns in Japan, which means a lot of Chinese. This shop has been running for quite a while, and their specialty is Nikuman, steamed pork butt. And you can tell by how long the line is. At first glance, it looks like a normal shop, but then you look across the road. Um, it's about, I'd say about 10 meters long. This queue kind of suggests that this place will be really amazing. But since we kind of grew up with steam buns and they're a pretty cheap, tasty option that's not hard to find, we'll see what we really think of it. If you eat inside, you have to have minimum three per person. So we decided to take away, and that's just three between the two of us. Can you get like four or five? You can order however many you like, just man minimum three buns for takeaway. It smells like cooking wine and it smells amazing. Almost like a savory donut. Mm, I like see that. Like a steamed donut instead of a deep fried one. There's only one flavor, so let's give it a try. Uh, it's coming out the other end. Mm. The bun is really thick and fluffy. It does taste a lot like cooking wine, so I'm not sure if they actually use cooking wine in the dough, but the filling doesn't taste like cooking wine, the bun does. The filling is pork mince, some spring onions, and you can feel that it's a pretty decent quality mince. There are some tendon bits and some flavorful fatty bits. It is unfortunately quite salty. It seems like they use a lot of soy sauce in it. There is no sweet component to this at all, which is what I'm used to with Chinese buns. I think the one downfall to eating it 
takeaway is that you can't dip it in the vinegar that they actually provide. Yeah. They have vinegar and mustard as well. So while this isn't a bad bun, it has a lot of downfalls that are just very minor for me. That don't make this personally the best, but it still is really good. It's very savory, it's very flavorful, it's hot, it's fresh, and you can tell it's handmade. Considering that we didn't actually wait that long for it, do you think it's worth how long we waited? I reckon it's worth trying, but if you don't feel like waiting, I think other places with smaller queues are going to be just as good. Honestly, after eating a second bun, I wouldn't actually recommend that place. It is quite salty. Ingredient quality tastes really good, but I can't personally stand how much salt there is. If you add soy sauce to your steamed buns, then go, go for it. By all means. That being said, there are tons of steamed bun restaurants all throughout the Chinatown area. So at least give one of them a go or at least try some Chinese food here. Anyway, everything that we ate, you can find all the information in our article which will be linked in the description below. As to where we are now, follow us on Instagram and twins speak eat go. See you next time. Oh my god.